Hey folks, Tom Rigsby here. Time for seven minutes in the morning. We're going to talk about your checklist again today and whether it would make Vilfredo proud or not. Stay tuned. Seven minutes in the morning is coming right up. Hey there folks, my name is Tom Rigsby, your host this morning for, and every morning, for 7 Minutes in the Morning, a uh, show where we help you get your day started off right. I'm going to come up with a better line for that, don't I? The show where I want to help you get your day started off better. So uh, this week, all this week we've been talking about a word I've decided to not use anymore, or at least change. So yesterday doing the radio show, it occurred to me that, and all, in fact, all week I've been saying process is kind of a dirty word. We don't like process. Uh, so I figured out yesterday that another good word for it is your checklist. We're building a checklist to find success. That's what we're working on this week. And today uh, I'm going to talk about a guy named Vilfredo. Before I do that, though, I want to talk about you. If you are watching this morning, whether you're watching live or on the replay, doesn't matter to me. Please leave a comment. Let me know that you are here, just like Brooke did. Good morning, Brooke. It always encourages me to see who's watching, to see who's out there. I can see that there are people there, but I just don't, like right here on the screen, I've got a little counter that says Brooke and somebody else is watching, but somebody else hadn't said hi yet this morning. So, that number goes up and down. I watch that and I wonder, well, who are you? Saying hi lets me know who you are. It also does something for you and it sets you up so that Facebook can help you stay connected to the conversation that goes on here well after the show is over in the comments. And if you don't read the comments, it's not AL.com. You can read the comments here. If you're not reading the comments, you're missing out on some real gold. There was some really good stuff. Uh, going on there yesterday, although it was spread out across several shows, so several pieces of video. It's Eric who's lurking. Ah, so now the secret's out. Good morning, sir. I'll see you in just a little bit for uh, the coffee shop show. That's this later this morning, 9 o'clock, coming to you live from Old Town Coffee. If you're in the area, stop by, grab a cup of coffee, and join us. All right, so our checklist in Vilfredo. Vilfredo is Vilfredo Pareto, the uh, um, originator, progenitor of the 80-20 rule. That's the Pareto principle, right? The 80-20 rule, which says 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. So this week we've been working on a process, a system to get you from point A to point Z. Right, And yesterday, I challenged you to come up with, to, to begin creating a process. It has to have at least five steps and just write it down. Then exercise it and see how well it's working for you. Tweak it a little bit, exercise it again. Go through this process because with the, what this does is it helps create predictability and that reduces anxiety and stress and what we've got going on, and it lets our mind skip forward to the next stop, or to the next uh, problem, the next challenge, and we don't have to worry about all this in here. The process has it taken care of, or the checklist, as, as you may. Now, once you have this list done, and I, it, you're probably not ready to do it yet, but maybe in a week or so, you'll want to 80-20 this list. Right. Look at the list and see, all right, does this thing really, is it really necessary to get me to my result? All right. And then do that for every line item. Is this step really necessary to get me to my result? What you should find, if the 80-20 rule plays out correctly, is that only about 20% of those steps are really necessary. Now, you might have some others that are in there for comfort, for reassurance, to make you feel good to give you a cup of coffee to drink, whatever the case may be, you're going to have to make the choice at that point whether they get to stay or not. And I, no, I, didn't, I didn't say it'd be easy. Did I? You're going to have to go through that list and call out that 80% that's not necessary to get you to your list. 
Let, let's think about this in a different way. Put a different spin on it. We talk about MVP a lot, minimum viable product, right? The minimum viable product is the least amount of work or the least amount of product that I can, that I can create that creates value that other people will pay me for. The least amount of work I can do that creates value that other people will pay me for. That's really what MVP is. And all you're doing when you're applying the 80-20 rule to your checklist is saying, okay, what's the MVP of this checklist? Yeah, 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 this other stuff m may even need to be done, but it's not necessary. It's not a key functional step in getting to the result. All right? And you, you know where I'm going with this. You guys... You guys know me. Once you take it off the list, it's never going back on the list. So you get that list down to the 20% that's really necessary in order to achieve that outcome. Now you exercise that a little bit. Yep, that's achieving the outcome I'm looking for. And all that other stuff I took out, turns out it's not that important after all. Really? That's how it works. So we're really... So whether you want to call it the 80-20 rule, whether you want to say you're MVPing your checklist, either one works fine with me, right? But once you get the list, because we all do this, it's not, I, I do it. I'm going through my uh, morning and evening check. I'm actually, I'm going through my morning checklist and starting an evening checklist this week as I'm doing this with you. And I've already found things that are, they're just extra. They don't, I mean, they're, they're not adding anything to the outcome that I'm looking for. Now, key to all of this is understanding the outcome that you're trying to achieve. We talked about that back on Monday. You really have to know, have to have a solid grasp on what the outcome is that you're trying to create. If you don't know that, then, then your checklist, your process is kind of useless anyway. It's a process for what? I mean, if you were, if I ask you to, this is kind of a common exercise. If I ask you to write a process for making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or, or to use the example that I used earlier this week for putting together a jigsaw puzzle, you, you first have to know what a jigsaw puzzle is in order to know how to write the process for it. Even if you don't know what the picture looks like, you have to know what the peanut butter and jelly sandwich is, what the, the desired outcome is, so you know whether the process achieved it or not. If I ask you to you know, write a process for constructing a do impus for a thingamajig, how will you know if you've done that or not? If you don't know what the outcome is that you're trying to create. We'll probably talk about outcomes again next week. That's kind of an important topic. And one that's becoming more and more key the closer we get to the end of the year. Because it's funny how this works out. You know, the closer you get to the end of the year, you start thinking about, well, was this year successful? What can I do to make next year successful? That's going to be a recurring theme over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. All right, that's it for today. Uh, so your challenge yesterday was to start a process with five things on it. Today, if if you can, it might be early for you to do this, but if you can, 80-20 that list. See if there's at least one thing, five things that are on there, one thing you can take off right? Maybe two or three, right? But get down to the MVP of your process. Minimum viable product, the least amount of work you can do to create value, to create value for you. Actually, in this case, you're not looking for something people will pay you for. All right. Remember, Coffee Shop Show is coming up at nine o'clock. Be sure to tune in uh, there. Hey, we've got a new URL. Eric doesn't even know this. This is brand new information for him. Thecoffeeshopshow.com. Yep, that'll take you to the right place. Now that I've said that, I should probably check that and make sure I'm right, shouldn't I? The coffee, yep, there it is, the coffeeshopshow.com. Takes you to the right place. Join us for the show at 9 o'clock. Uh, that's it. If you're watching the replay, remember to leave a comment, just like Brooke and Eric and Joe did. Thank all three of you for being here, and all of you that joined later. Awesome to have you here. Hope that this is helping. Leave me a comment. Let me know. And if you have a topic, by the way, coming up for Free Coaching Friday, leave me a question. I'll choose those questions from the comments uh, or from the messages that you send me for Free Coaching Friday. All right, that's it. Talk to you on the Coffee Shop Show. See you back here tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Talk to you tomorrow.